Of all the players who have put on the Bolton Wanderers shirt over the years, none of them can hold a candle to the great Nat Lofthouse. He was a trotter through and through, a man who was born in Bolton and died in Bolton. He was a one-club man and helped guide Bolton to their last major honour to date. This is a story of Nat Lofthouse, Bolton's greatest ever player. Nat Lofthouse was born in Bolton on the 27th of August 1925. As a boy, he looked content whenever he had a ball at his feet, and people soon noticed his incredible heading ability. Some of his contemporaries said it was as if Lofthouse could kick the ball with his head. He was a fan of Bolton Wonders from an early age, and would sneak into Burden Park via a drain pipe to avoid having to pay for entry. He would leave school at 14, and in one of his last days, upon receiving an award at a ceremony, he was handed it by a local councilman who was on the board at Bolton Wanderers. This man asked Lofthouse if he wanted to play for Bolton, and Lofthouse naturally jumped at the chance. Nat Lofthouse would sign for Bolton only one day after the United Kingdom had declared war on Germany. He was of 48,000 people who were sent to coal mines to help with the war effort rather than the front line, and a typical Saturday would see Lofthouse wake up at 3.30, work eight hours down the mine before getting a team bus to a match. His prolific goal scoring saw hype develop as professional football returned, and Lofthouse, despite being five foot nine, continued to display excellent heading ability, a skill he developed by spending several hours a day heading a tennis ball against a wall in his house. Despite scoring twice on his league debut for Bolton in a 4-3 defeat to Chelsea, Lofthouse initially struggled to adjust to league football, and at points considered leaving the game behind. Lofthouse also witnessed a harrowing experience when 33 fans were killed at Burden Park during a crush at an FA Cup tie against Stoke in 1946. In the aftermath of this disaster, as well as the war recovery, Bolton fans saw Lofthouse as one of their own, a player they could identify with, and he became a symbol of hope that could clear the clouds away. He was self-deprecating about his abilities, saying that all he could do was run, shoot, and head, but he was so good at doing these three things that he did not need any other talents. In the 46-47 season, Lofthouse netted 21 times and would score 18 the next campaign. As his goal-scoring tally improved, Bolton began to climb up the league, and he would receive his first England cap in 1950, netting twice as England drew 2-2 with Yugoslavia at Highbury. He would truly cement himself in the England side the next year, when in a game against Austria, he went on an incredible run, and despite being elbowed in the face and being brought down by a goalkeeper, he managed to score, which was the second of two goals in a 3-2 win. For his determination, he was nicknamed the Lion of Vienna. He continued getting the goals, and was awarded the FWA Footballer of the Year award in 1953. He had scored 30 goals, and had the chance to win his first major honour in the FA Cup final. Bolton Wanderers would play Blackpool at Wembley. Apart from the Bolton faithful, most of the nation were cheering on Stanley Matthews' Blackpool side, as they were desperate for him to finally win a major honour. Nat Lofthouse would score only two minutes in, but fellow England striker Stan Mortensen would level in the 35th minute. Bolton would go 3-1 ahead, thanks to goals from William Moore and Eric Bell, but Mortensen got two more to level the scores, before Stanley Matthews set up Bill Perry in stoppage time to get the winner. Blackpool won their first ever FA Cup, and whilst Lofthouse had been part of perhaps the greatest ever FA Cup final, he walked away empty-handed. Lofthouse is said to have stood and applauded his opponents afterwards in respect. It was a tough situation to deal with, but it did not deter Lofthouse. He continued to score for fun, netting 20-plus goals on multiple occasions, also netting twice for England at the 1954 World Cup. In 1958, he had a chance for FA Cup redemption. Bolton Wanderers would be heading to the FA Cup final again, where they would face Manchester United. Once again, Bolton would be against the support of the whole country, as Manchester United had miraculously reached the FA Cup final only months after losing eight players in the Munich air disaster. The two Lancashire sides took to the pitch, but Bolton would paint the town white. Once again, Lofthouse opened the scoring early on, when he latched onto a cross from Ryan Edwards and tapped the ball in. Lofthouse's second goal was controversial, as he barged into Manchester United goalkeeper Harry Gregg as he went to catch the ball, and chested it in. It was an incident that would lead to much greater protection for goalkeepers. Lofthouse would later admit this challenge was a foul. Amidst the controversy, Bolton held on to win 2-0, to win their first major trophy since 1929. Lofthouse 
Bolton, through and through, had guided them to Major Silverware, and climbed the Wembley steps to lift the trophy as captain. A sea of white welcomed Bolton home with the trophy, with the side guided back home by their local boy. Lofthouse had won his boyhood side, the FA Cup, a dream of every single young boy across the country at the time. Lofthouse scored twice as Bolton defeated Wolves 4-1 in the Charity Shield, and he continued playing for a number of years, netting an incredible 35 times in the 58-59 campaign, which helped Bolton to a fourth place finish, but his time was soon up. In 1960, Nat Lofthouse was forced to retire at 33, due to a combination of ankle and knee injuries. He retired as a one-club man, scoring 285 goals for Bolton, making him their all-time top scorer, a record unlikely to ever be beaten. He also scored 30 goals in 33 caps for England. After retiring, he spent time on the Bolton coaching staff and was the manager between 1968 and 1971. He had a caretaker spell in 1985 and was appointed president of the club in 1986. He would later be awarded the Freedom of Bolton and the stand at the club's Reebok Stadium was named after him in 1997. Nat Lofthouse died on the 15th of January 2011, at the age of 85. Following his passing, tributes poured in from across the game, as English football bid farewell to one of its greatest ever strikers. Soon after his passing, a campaign to erect a statue in his honour began, and in 2013, the dream became reality, when a statue was unveiled outside Bolton Stadium on the 24th of August 2013. It was a fitting way to immortalise a Bolton great. Lofthouse's story is a textbook footballing fairy tale. A player who grew up supporting his local side and slaved away at a gruelling job before realising his dream and making a career out of playing for the club he loved. A one-club man is rarely seen in football, but Lofthouse did it ideally, guiding his side to an FA Cup, the last captain to lift major silverware for the Trotters. There is no player more synonymous with the club than Lofthouse, as he lived and breathed Bolton Wanderers, and for that, the club will never forget everything that he did for them. <laughs>